Baddest West episode one. So this episode opens up with everybody in wardrobe getting their makeup done because they're getting ready to shoot these little promo pics that you see right here for the opening credits. However, everything did not go as planned. Now, despite Ms. Low London being concerned as to where Krishan was at, where Krishan, where Krishan, acting like a little groupie, oh, Miss Stunner Girl, she was getting ready to sneak Tommy as soon as she seen her. Now, Stunner Girl been fighting since the auditions. So, as soon as she seen Tommy, she went in for it. And when I say went in, she went in for it. Stunner yelling at her like, yeah, I had you on that floor swimming. And Tommy like, shoot, I'm having a fight I didn't even know I was supposed to be having. The drama with these ladies started quickly. And old Krishan gonna have nerve to say she snuck her. Miss Queen of Sneaking had nerve to say somebody snuck somebody. And y'all, poor Tommy was looking so bad afterward. I mean, she was looking casket ready. Like, who did the body? Y'all know y'all go to a funeral and y'all be like, who did the body? Who did the makeup? Yes, that is what Tommy was given. So Stunner Girl is already ready for round two while security and everybody clean up Tommy's body fluids off the floor because she got a little cut on her ankle. So Tommy tried to get herself back together and everybody else is just shocked standing around because this is like their first official assignment. And y'all, now I said I was not going to body shame and I was not going to age shame. But what the heck was Biggie doing with them pasties running around there? Mm, girl, stop. So once Tommy get herself all the way together, y'all, she's so mad. She's yelling at the security all up in their face, screaming like an angry coach, mad because they was holding her back, telling them, you know, don't hold me back. If Let me get mine in. Like, Tommy, the veins. Tommy, the veins. Calm down, Tommy, the veins. Man be really looking like she about to have a stroke or something when she gets angry. So somebody come and hand Tommy her panties, and Tommy takes the panties, and she's slanking them around in the security guard's face, trying to take them and put them on his head, telling them smack. These I just took these off. They smell good, don't they? You my man now. Like, what type of love spell voodoo are you trying to put on these men to get favor from them? I mean, she was running around trying to put them on all the males' faces and get them to sniff them. Tommy definitely cooked spaghetti for her man, for sure. If you know, you know. So Tommy walking around with her panties in the air, telling everybody how she had them on all day and they smell good. And now the first challenge is everybody take their panties off and we're going to pass them around and smell them to see what they smell like. That's a real baddest challenge. Now, ma'am... What it sound like to me, either you got a little panty sniffing fetish, you know what I'm saying? Or this is the first time that little kitty cat of yours ain't had a little odor to it and you just happy and want everybody to know. Because if somebody twat stinking, you ain't going to have to sniff the panties to find out. Soon they sit down, they sit down air is going to let you know that thing ain't right down there. Or once they get the twerking, that twerk air going to let you know everything ain't right down there. So what's the next day? And they all waiting to get on the Sprinter bus so they can go to the house. And Krishan calls Rolly and like, check it out. You know, I ain't trying to have no problem with nobody. I don't want nobody trying to start nothing with me, trying to get clout. And everybody like, okay, cool. But Miss Low London start beating her gums, talking about, you know, Krishan is not here. This is the second time. She ain't on time. Like, girl, why is you so concerned with this girl? It's giving very much groupie. So they all get on a sprinter bus, and before you know it, Kat and Biggie start having this little spat because Kat says she promoted something, and so Biggie's like, oh, you a promoter? And Kat like, I ain't no promoter. No, let me tell you what I do. I got this business. I got this many stores. Like, they start having a titty contest as to who does what and who does not do what. Now, I'll tell you this. I did not know there was a hierarchy in event planning. Like, you're an event planner. You are a promoter and like one was better than the other but anyhow I guess they was just trying to get their little camera time in so Lo brought up Tommy and Stunner Girl fighting and Stunner Girl is like well she threw a drink at me at the audition so she should have been knowing that I was gonna come for her and Biggie want to take it upon herself to interject in a conversation and it's like well a baddie knows a time and place and Stunner Girl was like don't tell me when to fight and Kat trying to be messy gonna ask everybody how y'all feel about Tommy after last night and 
everybody like, oh, I like Tommy. I mess with her. Like, she cool. She cool. And really, like, I'm not about to pick no sides. Tommy cool. Stunner girl cool. You know, until either one of them show me otherwise. And Miss Biggie want to open her mouth. And she's like, well, I like Tommy, you know. But it's a time and a place for everything. Trying to throw shade at Stunner girl. And Stunner girl, Stunner girl is like, shut up up like every time somebody talking you opening your mouth you running your mouth where she not lying it's like biggie is clout chasing like biggie be quiet baby girl you're hard to miss stunner girl started going off on biggie low london got herself up so quick out of harm's way so biggie really started egging stunner girl on she stood up and telling her well do to me what you did to tommy forget the time and place come on let's go let's go so stunner girl unlike rosa park she was ready to go to the back of the bus i mean security was trying to hold her back cat was trying to hold her back so biggie loving every moment of it because stunner girl tried to hit her with a bottle but she missed so Razor is pissed off because it was her bottle that Stunner Girl threw, but she didn't let that be known that she was mad, but she got up out the way. And then Stunner Girl made a comment that everybody could be on the ground. And that did not sit well with Rolly because she's like, ha, ha, wait, wait, hold up. What? Who? Wait, wait, who are you talking about? What you talking about? And Stunner Girl like, nah, I'm cool. We cool. I, you know, we cool. For some reason, I feel like Rolly was just waiting for the right opportunity to get pissed with Stunner Girl. But Stunner Girl shouldn't be making no blanket comments comments well blanket threats and that you're trying to take that same blanket and get put to sleep with and just that fast stunner girl snatched the wig off of roly somebody really needs to tell these girls do not glue their wigs down because your wig will get snatched and you will not have any edges so that was the end of this week's episode on next week's episode they have where they get to the house everybody pick their rooms and of course roly and stunner girl run that fade and also low london confronts krishan basically about being late and y'all already know how that turned out so now let's get into each of the cast members. So Miss Natalie, to me, she's the puppet master. She's the one that's going to keep all the drama going. She's going to be throwing the rocks, applying the rocks, and of course, hiding her hand. All while trying to get to the bag. Now Miss Cat is giving mama, auntie, trying to take care of everybody. She seemed like the one that'll be in the kitchen cooking breakfast in the morning time. Right now, Razor, she's my favorite. She seems real laid back, real quiet. Like, she ain't trying to do too much. Now, Miss Low London, I want to like her. I really do. But it just seems like her name should be Slow London because she don't know what she should say and what she should not say. Like, girl, just, 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 shh. Be quiet. Just be quiet. B-I-double-G-I-E. Girls pee pee when they see me. Now, Biggie, you got a name like Biggie. You got a voice like Biggie. Baby, everything that you do ain't got to be Biggie. Pipe down, Biggie, like you doing too much. You have been doing the most talking, the most just trying to get the most camera time. Just pipe down, baby girl. Like, you ain't got to do all that. All of that ain't necessary. We see you. We hear you. Chill out. Chillax. Now, Scotty, she seems real unproblematic. Like, she don't want no beef. She don't want no smoke. She really just want to turn up, have a good time, get drunk, kiss girls in a club, and just be a baddie. You can tell she's really not the fighting type. Now, DJ Sky High Baby is another one that just seems real unproblematic. She's basically here to be Krishan's handler. Like, her homegirl, Krishan, put her on to get a check. And that's basically what the deal is why she's here. Like, she's just low-key in the cut, in the back of the scene, holding Krishan's hand. Making sure she don't swing on nobody. Now, Rolly, I know her from last season. She's going to talk that ish. She going to back it up. She going to represent for the big girls. She also going to represent for the hood, super hood chicks that just don't give a F. And we got Stunner Girl. Now, I don't know what type of demon time this girl is on or what type of demons she is fighting. But it's definitely some deep-rooted issues there. Now, I don't know if y'all know, but allegedly... Tommy had a girl locked in a cage. Like, should she even be on this show? Is that even legal? Should she even be out? Is she out on parole right now? This one right here really, really concerns me. 
I just feel like she gonna be the one crying in the episode talking about how much she been through and how hard her life is and why she's the way that she is because this one right here this this is a special situation and of course we got our cash cow Krishan Rock in the building. The main reason why most folks are tuning in to this trash TV. We're trying to get another dose of Miss Krishan Rock and all her antics. Come on now, Zeus. Y'all know what's going on. Y'all know what time it is. Cut the check. And of course, oh, Miss Tommy. You know what? I'm done talking, Tommy. You done talking? Yep. Me too. Make a cycle, make a traffic cycle. Yeah, I like Stunna. She stepping. I just don't want her stepping this way. Baddies West, episode two. I guess Stunner Girl really liked to walk on the wild side. Now, she done threw a drink in Rolly's face. She also snatched her wig off. And now she's like literally trying to climb her way to the back seat to get to Rolly. Now, Stunner Girl must know what she's doing because she took Rolly from looking like this to looking like this in a matter of seconds. They told Stunner Girl, uh-uh, girl, get your ass up off the Sprinter bus and you're going to find an alternate route to the crib. Rolly wanted to put hands on Stunner Girl so bad, she was begging the security to let her go outside. I think it was the embarrassment that had her so pissed off because Stunner Girl did leave her looking kind of silly. So Stunner Girl currently has three girls that want to put hands on her. So she gets in the other van and all the girls inside, you know, they running down the score as to what happened, who said what, who did what. So after Rolly get the drink thrown in her face and her wig snatched, she starts talking about what she going to do when she sees Stunner Girl and how Stunner Girl ain't going to eat in the house, ain't going to sleep in the house. Like I'm on her ass. And then, of course, Biggie had to jump herself into the conversation, talking about, yeah, I was grabbing her, I was hitting her. Like, come on now, Biggie, that wasn't even your fight. And you trying to get clout off of it. So Natalie remind everybody that you can't hit each other with things, objects like bottles. Now, somebody need to tell Krishan that. Because you know she had hit Blue upside the head with the Hennessy bottle and tried to vacuum the glass out. Now, I think me and Natalie was thinking the same thing right here because, Roly, what happened? Now, if you're going to wear wigs weaves, what have you, still take care of your natural hair. I am so sick of seeing this where it's like girls think just because they wear weaves and wigs that they could just fully neglect their own hair. And then you left looking like this. This don't make no damn sense. And for some reason, now I don't fully know the reason. I know it has to be a good reason, but I don't trust people like this. It's like... Tell me you don't give a fluff without telling me you don't give a fluff. So she took the hat off and was putting her bonnet on. Now, the bonnet is a Chanel bonnet. Now, we know it ain't a real Chanel bonnet. I doubt it Chanel is making bonnets for us. But anyhow, I guess she felt she had to, like, level up a little bit and put her Chanel bonnet on. But my advice to Rolly is cut all that. Just cut all that shit off and, girl, shine it up. Wear you some cute earrings, do your makeup. That way, when you got your wig snatched or your wig not on, you still serving. Because a baddie is not walking around with two inches of fried, dyed, green hair. No matter how you wear your hair, a real baddie should take care of her crown. So then Natalie then proceeds to tell them that Stunner Girl had a girl kidnapped and locked in a dog cage for days. So everybody, understandably, is like, oh, heck no. Nah. Like, who the heck you got us in the house with? Like, that's a psychopath. And I must tell you, that that ain't normal. That ain't normal. I think these girls need like a mental evaluation before they just let them up in the house like that. Okay, now. So the girls are all excited because they finally pulled up to the house. And it's a cute little mansion. So they have a little powwow outside on the porch before going inside. And Rolly's still talking about what she going to do to Stunner Girl because Stunner Girl messed up her $1,000 wig. Girl, Rolly, you won't even put $2 worth of product in your hair. You should not be running around talking about how much that wig costs. But I'm going to leave you alone about your hair for now.
So the girls are finally inside the house and they are so excited to be inside this mansion. So Natalie started assigning everybody to their roommates and you know they're gonna go and find their rooms now while they doing this miss cat and stunner girl is outside having a little chit chat about the little bus ride so stunner girl tells cat like you know i don't like nobody threatening me me and her didn't even have a problem but then she started threatening me and i don't like you know she got her little street rules that she have and then she said that um biggie just keep opening her mouth that she tired of her because she keep opening her mouth inserting herself in every conversation and she's like well i get it if she don't do that she's not gonna get no attention so cat is outside trying to give stunner girl like some big sister advice and you could tell stunner girl really wasn't trying to hear what cat was talking about girl so they got these living quarters for these baddies looking real bad they literally have a nice size bed with a little doggy bed, a little mattress on the floor for another girl. I feel like they're trying to play some type of dominance game to see, okay, which girl is going to let the other girl punk her out the bed. And of course, Natalie got this big old room all to herself. So Natalie goes into her room and she calls Biggie up in there to talk to her. And she tells Biggie like, I want you to be my right hand man this season. And y'all know Biggie all for that. So she's like, yeah, I know you can deal with any weird stuff these girls do. If they crying, the fighting, like you can handle all that. Like Biggie, this is not an uh, uh, opportunity. This is not a promotion. Natalie is about to use the hell out of you. And she ain't waste no time because Natalie got on the phone and she started calling Tommy and Krishan like, where y'all at? Y'all late. And it's like she only was calling Biggie in there for backup to do that. Like Natalie is low key trying to have her little henchman. So Natalie tells Tommy that her and Biggie are going to be roommates. And Biggie was all excited about it, but I don't think Tommy liked that. So Stunner Girl and Miss Cat make their way back to the house. And once inside the house, they're shown their room. And of course, they got a big bed and a doggy bed. And Stunner Girl did not hesitate to claim the bed. Even though Miss Cat was acting like she couldn't sleep on the full size bed, let alone the little mattress on the floor. You know, she said she was going to talk to Miss Natalie and work that out. But Stunner Girl proudly hopped on the bed and was like, well, I don't know what you're going to do. So Krishan and her babysitter, DJ Sky, finally makes it to the mansion. And I must say, Krishan was looking kind of cute. Like, I liked her whole little outfit, the hair, everything was given. She looked real cute. But she did some basic Krishan mess when Natalie asked her about the tooth. Girl, she gonna take the tooth out her mouth and shoved the door and tooth in Natalie's face. Natalie must have ducked and dodged back so fast and Krishan going to say, my breath don't stink, do it, and give it to DJ Sky to sniff. And why DJ Sky ass going to sniff it and talk about no? Now, if these two share a room and it's a doggy bed on the floor, DJ Sky going to run across and hop on the damn doggy bed like a puppy. Then Krishan just start manhandling Natalie saying how she never changed and she's just like a mean big sister. But Natalie is more of a manipulative frenemy. She immediately started being real messy, telling Krishan how I had to cover for you from the other girls. And Krishan's like, why? And Natalie is telling her because they was mad that you was late, like basically stirring the pot. So Natalie takes them to go sit down on the couch to grind it in even deeper that the girls feel some type of way about them being late and not being. You can definitely tell that made Krishan feel some type of way. And she also shared that she liked Stun Girl and that the fight was funny to her that her and Tommy had because it wasn't her and that she doesn't want Stun Girl to push any of that her way. So, Krishan, you scared to see Stunner? Now, that's one little beef right there. I would mind watching. So Krishan reiterated the fact that she was not there to fight any other girls, that she basically wanted to have a good time, and that she was working on keeping her hands to herself. 
But you could tell that was not the reaction that Natalie was expecting from Krishan because I guess that fire had went out because Natalie grabbed a lot of fluid and threw some more on Krishan and told her how the girl said that she was acting Hollywood and that she's basically just prancing around. Natalie was basically making an appointment for these girls to get slid across the floor by Krishan. So Krishan is feeling nice and attacked. So that was Natalie's cue to go have Biggie round up the girls and bring them down. Before they could even sit down in the living room, they started to tussle. So apparently Stunner Girl ran up on Biggie and was trying to get that off. And Biggie seemed so happy to be the star of a little situation. And Roly was trying to get round two going with Stunner Girl at the same time. But Stunner Girl was like, I already done snatched you up. Like, sit down and let me get this one off with Biggie. So they separated Stunner Girl again. She reminds me of the kid in the classroom that bites other kids. So all the girls came into the living room to sit down to have their little conversation. Now, on a side note, I noticed Krishan went and changed her pants. Now, I'm starting to think she's learning she should not be walking around with stains on her clothes. Because even though she was trying to hide underneath that blanket, it was real obvious that she had changed pants. So Natalie finally gets all the girls to sit down, calm down, and they start having a conversation. And they was talking about everything that had transpired thus far, talking about Roly and Stunner having they fight. And then the conversation went to Krishan not being on time for the photo shoot. And you know, Miss Low London had to chime in. She had to have the most to say. And Natalie, you know, she was egging the situation on and everybody else was just kicking back watching the whole situation. So the more Low London talked, the more attention Krishan gave her. I mean, she was perched in her seat. She was on every word that she was saying. Then you seen her start cracking her knuckles and low London still sitting there with her legs crossed. I tell y'all her name should be slow London because everybody else was very aware as to what was about to go down. And to her surprise, bam, Krishan was all up over her in 2.2 seconds. The girls were scrambling to get out the way. And I don't blame them. I don't want to get hit in somebody else's fight either. And I guess Krishan gets a little wild because security had to basically lay his whole body on top of her. Now, y'all know Zeus going to cut it off right at the good part. So, unfortunately, that was the end of this episode. But the next episode, soon as start, you already know what we picking up from. We going to see the rest of this tussle. And also, Stunner Girl and Roly go for round two. And Stunner Girl and Tommy go for round two also. I hope these girls do more than just get drunk and fight. Hell, next season, they gonna need Bad Girls Rehab with Therapy Thursdays. But anyway, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out my Crazy in Love playlist and also my Baddie Sweats playlist that we getting started. Mm-hmm. Until next time, you guys. Bye. <laughs> Baddies West, episode three. So Slow London was caught off guard by Krishan. And I don't understand how everybody else saw it coming, but Low London just did not see it. Everybody could smell what the rock was cooking. Once she sat up and started popping them knuckles, Low should have just ran up out the room. It seemed like she wanted Krishan attention so bad, she didn't care how she got it. So Krishan gave her plenty of hands-on attention. And kept yelling how she wasn't wasting no time. But girl, I thought you was just saying you was trying to work on your anger and keep your hands to yourself. I mean, that lasted how long? Five minutes? So she started popping it to London because, you know, she just put hands on her. So she trying to talk her little ish, saying why is another girl concerned about her? And, of course, low London is all confused, talking about, I thought she would have kept herself composed. What? Girl, you thought? Then Krishan started popping it even more, talking about time on time. Girl, I can't even tell time of my Cartier. But something tells me, if that was a digital watch, girl, Krishan probably couldn't tell the time on it either. 
So Lo London was walking around dazed and confused, and I understand because she was giving new meaning to third eye because it looked like baby girl had three additional eyes coming off the top of her head. So you got Krishan roaming around like a lion that's ready to eat, and Natalie is standing in front of Lo London, not like she's trying to keep her back, but like she's trying to protect her. Now Natalie, you know Krishan will steamroll right through you. That wasn't the case because a whole nother rumble started breaking out. You had Roly and Stunner Girl trying to get at each other again. They was ready for that round two. Well, Roly was ready for the round two because she said she was ready to give her the butt whooping that she was trying to get the first time. But Roly, why you didn't give it to her last time when she was trying to get it? Roly, she caught you lacking. You got your wig snatched and a drink through in your face? Now Stunner Girl is basically mocking you. If poking a bear was a person, it's definitely stunner girl stunner girl i can't feel sorry for anything roly do to you after this because you on her head speaking of being on somebody's head dj sky baby is all over krishan acting like she's her personal stylist chambermaid girl you are the babysitter not the groomer she running around looking like she's krishan's personal assistant what you call it when a girl is acting like a pick me to another girl. It was literally acting like one of those people after the boxers fight and they go over to their corner and they give them water and tend to their hands. Like, okay, coach. And don't say, oh, they just friends because I heard some hot tea about these two. So Lo London's pride must have got the best of her because she went charging at Krishan again. And I don't know what on earth possessed her to do that. And of course, it was short lived. Because security quickly came in and separated the two. And they both was hooping and hollering at security. Like, let me go. Don't hold me. Don't hold me. So DJ Sky started giving her another pep talk. And then Krishan like, take off my chains. Take off my chains. So, of course, her little henchman complied and started taking off all her chains and her jewelry. So Lo London is popping and telling Krishan, oh, you just wanted to have a problem with me. You just wanted to have a problem with me. Girl, you the one started it all in that woman's business. Business. So Krishan laid her on her back, of course, and then proceeded to start doing her hair. Now, I don't know if these were tape-ins or a sew-in weave, but Krishan successfully uninstalled it with ease. And Lo London decided she had enough and got up from there and ran her tail upstairs. I am convinced that Krishan becomes possessed by some type of demon because she was sitting there with the security with the hair in her hand yelling, drag her, drag her drag her as if she was giving herself instructions then she went in the kitchen and start i'm starting to think krishan needs an exorcist so Lo london you know she ran upstairs and started looking in her bag now she was talking about this ain't no wig i don't think she was looking for no laser glue or no got to be but it was concerning me how deep she was in that bag and child why biggie downstairs trying to argue with stunner girl along with roly like biggie you just always gotta insert yourself in a situation so all three of them were sounding stupid talking about you scary you scary y'all all being held up by security then stunner girl gonna tell roly ah uh, you tried to pay security 300 dollars to eat your cat now that caught me all the way off guard the way stunner was talking mess to roly i swear she wanted her to eat her alive so after spending some time getting herself back together lo london decides to come downstairs and show krishan who she is and i just want to tell low london girl i don't think krishan is concerned krishan main concern right now is stunner girl asking stunner girl are we cool do we have beef i guess she wanted to know you know do i gotta fight you too because both of them seem wow and child why natalie setting up the couch like she ready to have another little sit down meeting here come razor being messy child she started following low london around telling her you gotta get your lick back friend you gotta get your lick back Child, did you see her try to get her lick back twice and it didn't work? Low London on the phone telling her peoples, girl, I'm in here get my ass whooped. While Razor said, yeah, then get your lick back. You got to get your lick back. Uh-uh, get somebody else to do it. I would have told her, girl, you go get it back for me. Then Low London started complaining how she had to take off her nails. Girl, you could have left them on because them hands wasn't doing nothing. After constantly telling her to get her lick back, Razor goes and get Low London some ice. Now, she leaves two cups of ice at the door now girl i don't need you reminding me how bad i got my butt whooped meanwhile stunner girl is downstairs drinking red bull trying to get her wings 
and decide to give Rolly some. I don't know what Rolly gonna do when she get her hand on Stunner Girl, but I know it won't be pretty. Girl, Rolly had red blood rolling down her cheeks like she was crying. I'm gonna start calling Stunner Girl the bartender because she's definitely serving drinks. So Tommy finally get there and Biggie is all excited, jumping up and down like a damn puppy when she see Tommy come in. So Tommy is kind of confused because she's like, what is all this commotion going on? So she see that Rolly and Biggie is into it with Stunner Girl also. So Stunner Girl is sitting up in there with Miss Cat like that's her little babysitter. Miss Cat, stop trying to make this girl problems yours. So Stunner Girl is like, they all talk and Stunner Girl acting like she really bought that lie. Cause she's like, if Rolly shut up, they'll let us fight. Like she really trying to do this. So Krishan come in there like she's the fight organizer and get everything situated and set up. So she did something right because they prepared to run fades. So everybody with a business right now, Rolly getting ready. You got Stunner Girl in there doing yoga and stretching. I mean, at this point, I wonder was Rolly second guessing everything? however she was like let the bull in let the cow in and child they let Rolly in there and the fight was weak it was real weak it was not giving so then it was Tommy turn and when Tommy came in there this girl was giving punches she was doing right hooks uppercuts you can tell Tommy being around the prison yard scrapping and then Rolly gonna try to come in and get her some more licks in girl you had your chance twice sit down Rolly so then you hear running the fade, Tommy doing her thing, Stunner Girl doing her thing, and tell me how Rolly get hurt. Every time Rolly have a fight, she leaking. So right now she's literally leaking body fluid all over the floor. Then they discover that she needs to go to the hospital to get stitches. Now I don't know how it happened, but Rolly cut her butt on some glass. At this point, I think it's time for Rolly to just retire. Hang it up, ma. They literally had Stunner Girl running phase back to back. And fighting Tommy seemed like it was a job. So while they trying to patch Rolly booty up to prepare to take her to the hospital, oh, Biggie is in there celebrating like she didn't did her big one. At this point, I want to see Biggie get down. Because all that talking you doing, I need to see, can you really back it up? So they send Rolly off to go get her butt sewed up. And Natalie got nerve to be talking about she mad. Girl, please, you know you live for this type of drama. Natalie is moist right now. Tell that to somebody like Scotland who might buy it. And that's exactly what they did. Because the next morning, her and Scotland had a little weak conversation in the kitchen. It was giving very much. Zeus was like, y'all go in there and just give a recap of everything. But the tea was actually brewing upstairs when Razor went into the room with Low London and was like, hey, how you doing? And she was like, girl, I'm just ready to get up out of here. Razor was like, girl, you look good. You could tell she meant, girl, them knots went down on your head real good. I'm surprised because they was big as heck. So Lo London said she felt like she was ambushed for speaking her mind, which, I mean, in actuality, you were. You were. That's what happened. In situations like this, it's best to keep your mind to yourself. And no, you are not tripping. She also has a splint on her finger. Now, with Low London defense, she did say she's coming from living a good life right now, that she don't have all this trauma and drama, and she's not fighting her man every day. So this really caught her off guard. And I can understand, when you live in a soft life or a good life, or you just high vibrational, you know, you can easily get caught off guard by some drama. But that's why you got to stay ready. You got to keep them eyes open and them ears peeled at all times. Because you never know nowadays who is actually out here on demon time. Dude, you fighting them and they fighting you like you, they traumas and they demons. So meanwhile, Rolly, Biggie, and Miss Cat is outside having a little fake conversation. You know, they have to just get it in for Zeus. They rehashing everything that happened, talking about it. They basically sitting around like men do after a basketball game and talk about what happened during the game. But I tell y'all this, Miss Cat, you need to mind your own business. Rolly, you need to pipe down. And Biggie, shut up. I'm tired of hearing your mouth.
Now, y'all, I don't know what Razor said to Low London, but she came downstairs suited and booted like she was ready for Call of Duty Black Ops. So she was obviously ready for another round with Krishan. And Krishan was basically just standing there not saying nothing. And DJ Sky Baby was doing all the talking. So apparently when Low London came downstairs, she tried to sneak Krishan real quick, but it was a failed attempt. So now that she's suited and booted, she's trying to get to the root of the problem with Krishan, which the problem began by you opening your mouth, not minding your business. So now you expecting Krishan to go back and forth with you and have this mature conversation, which Krishan is not about to have. Krishan literally stood there and would not open her mouth, would not say nothing. She was basically ready to fight again. So somehow Natalie convinced all the girls to sit down and have a little powwow once again. So basically, Krishan was telling Low London how she didn't like the way she was talking to her, that she was talking to her like she was somebody's mama. And Low London was like, you know, it really wasn't like that. And how she really wanted to get to the bag. Now, once they start talking about getting to the bag, I guess that's what made both of them want to be in agreement with each other and decide to hug it out like two mature women. Now, now, I hope the other girls in the group can take note of that and, you know, have that same type of mentality when it comes to having a problem with one another. So then they brought Stunner Girl out to speak her piece. And, child, when they brought her out, I guess Roly said, not this time. Whole time Stunner Girl was talking, Roly had her hand on her wig. She said, you won't be snatching this one off. So Stunner basically said she don't want nobody in her business and she don't want nobody telling her what to do. And then Rolly told her, well, I didn't have a problem with you. I just didn't like when you was threatening everybody. And Biggie's like, I didn't tell you what to do. I gave you constructive criticism and you couldn't take it. So I guess production was like, yeah, Biggie, your concerns is not really valid. So let's just wrap this up. And so you got Biggie in the kitchen crying, trying to make it all about her because she still has a problem. Girl, get over it. Like, stop trying to make this about you. I can't even tell y'all exactly what she said because I just cannot pay that type of energy any mind. So I guess on the next episode, Razor felt like it was about due for her to have some solid camera time. So she now has a problem with Scotland. Unproblematic, I don't want to smoke Scotland. And can you believe these two actually went at it? Yes, they had a little tussle. I can't wait to see how this plays out. Until next time, bye. Make a cycle, make a traffic cycle.